Hey everybody. Today we're talking about hypothesis testing using the T distribution. Here we're in a situation where the standard deviation of the population is unknown. So previously we've done all of our hypothesis testing using Z statistics. We've considered where the sample mean that we got stands in the sampling distribution of all the possible sample means that we could have gotten. Um, assuming the null hypothesis is true and that the population standard deviation is sigma. So we then would use that z statistic to get a p-value, quantifying how unusual our sample mean was given h0. The problem with all that is that we usually don't know sigma. We don't usually know what the standard deviation of the population is. Why should we? The whole point of this kind of statistical inference is to get information about the population using information about the sample. So what should we do in that situation? The short answer is we should estimate the population standard deviation with the sample standard deviation and do exactly the same calculation as before. Now the problem there is that when sigma is replaced with s, suddenly that x bar minus mu over the standard deviation divided by the square root of n is not going to have a normal distribution because not only does x bar change with every new sample so does that standard deviation so what we have is a t distribution with n minus one degrees of freedom fortunately once we take that into account the calculations are more or less the same to do a hypothesis test when sigma is unknown, we're going to start with null and alternative hypotheses. Then we're going to assume that the null hypothesis is true, and we're going to compute the t-statistic for the sample data that we actually have. So we're going to do x bar minus mu naught divided by s over the square root of n. And after that we compute p-values. If we have a left-sided alternative hypothesis, we'll get the probability that we randomly get a t-statistic less than or equal to the one we got when the null hypothesis is true. For a right-sided alternative hypothesis, mu greater than mu naught, we'll want the probability of randomly getting a t-statistic greater than the one we got. Finally, if it's a two-sided um, test, then we will want to get either one of those two and then double it. Finally, once we've got a p-value, we're going to make a decision by comparing to our significance level alpha that we selected at the beginning of the problem. So the tricky thing here when you're doing them by hand, of course, is actually getting that t-value from the sample data. So I think pictures help a lot. So for example, looking at that left-sided alternative hypothesis where we're suspecting that mu is greater than, or I'm sorry, mu is less than some value. Um, we're talking about the probability of randomly getting a t-value less than the t that we actually got. That's the shaded area there in that first picture. Um, similarly, if it's a right-sided alternative, mu greater than mu naught, it's going to be the area to the right of that t-value. And if we have a two-sided alternative, we have to consider both areas. We're talking about the probability of getting a t larger than the one we got in absolute value. So Basically, that means that we need to find either one of these two areas, whatever is easiest, and then double it. And that'll give you the p-value. In each case, we should do our calculations using technology. There are tables. Textbooks will sometimes tell you to use a table. You should not. In R, the command for the CDF um, in a t-distribution is pt of t comma n minus 1. So that's going to be the area to the left of a certain t-value in the distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. So I made a picture. It looks like one of our left-sided alternative plots. This is um, a good thing to keep in mind whenever you're doing a probability calculation in the t-distribution. By the way, the picture is exactly the same as the one I would have drawn for the normal distribution when I do the CDF, area to the left. The only difference is that the numbers come out very slightly different. Let's do an example. The weight losses of seven mice during an experiment are listed below. Is there sufficient evidence to conclude that mice lose weight during this experiment? Test at significance level alpha equals 0.05. So here we're not given a population standard deviation. So we're definitely in a t-test situation. Even more, we're not even given the sample standard deviation or sample mean. 
we have to compute those. So I've encoded this data as a variable named mice in R, and then I've gotten the mean 0.44 and the standard deviation 0.64. Now let's start the test by setting a null and an alternative hypothesis. As usual, our null hypothesis is going to be the idea that our data is just due to random chance, that mice on average do not lose weight during this experiment, and that our group just did through luck. Um, the alternative hypothesis is the thing that we're interested in establishing. So here that mice do on average lose weight during this experiment. We've chosen a one-sided alternative because we are specifically interested in whether, whether the mice have lost weight. We are not considering the possibility that they've gained weight. That's just not interesting to us here. Now we need to know how extreme is our sample data in all of the in the distribution of all the possible samples we could have gotten under the null hypothesis. So we do the sample mean we got minus the population mean under the null hypothesis, mu naught is zero, divided by the standard deviation of our sample over the square root of n. Overall, we get 1.82. Our p-value is going to be the probability of getting a t-value greater than or equal to that just by random chance. So when we're thinking about evaluating that probability statement, we really want to be thinking in terms of a picture. The p-value is going to be that shaded area there, the area to the right of t equals 1.82 in the t-distribution with 6 degrees of freedom, 6 being 1 less than our sample size. So to get the area to the right of something, first we get the area to the left, and then we subtract from 1. So 1 minus pt of 1.82 comma 6. And I put that into r, and I get 0.059. That's the p-value of the test. Since p is greater than the alpha that we set at the beginning, 0.05, we are unable to reject the null hypothesis. There's insufficient evidence to conclude that the experiment causes mice to lose weight on average. As usual, we recognize this does not mean the null hypothesis is true. We just don't have powerful enough evidence yet to reject it.